Alright, and welcome to Graphing Linear Functions, Level 1. Now, in our very first example, it wants us to graph a very simple equation, y equals 4x minus 2. So, the first thing we want to do is always write down what is our overall function for uh, linear functions. So that's going to be y equals mx plus b, where we know that m is going to be our slope, and we know that b is going to be our y-intercept. So when I look at this, it's always so imperative that we label our slope and our y-intercept right off the bat. Well, you'll notice your slope, this m, is always going to be in front of the x. So when I look at this, y equals 4x minus 2, I know that 4 is going to be my slope. Now one other key factor for the slope is you always want to write it as a fraction. And since 4 is a whole number, we can write as 4 over 1. Now then we look at our constant, and we know it's a constant because it doesn't have any variable here. There's no letter, there's no x, no y, no z. We have this negative 2, and so our y-intercept must be negative 2. Now, how do you graph that? And I would say if there's one key takeaway from this video, how to graph this is, in fact, the key takeaway. So we always start with our y-intercept, and in fact, I would like for you to circle that and write the word start. And because it's the y-intercept, we know that we're going to look at the y-axis, and negative 2, what do you think? Would that go up 2 or down 2? We know that goes down 2, and we'll put our starting point. Now, when you see a slope of 4 over 1, look at it. The top is positive, the bottom is positive, and I'm going to kind of write this over here m equals 4 over 1. And remember, when talking about slope, we know that the top is what we call delta y over delta x. And all that is, that's a fancy way of saying the change in y over the change in x. So how is this function changing? Well, in the y direction, it's going to go up 4. So we count up 1, 2, 3, 4. And then in the x direction, it's a positive 1, which will actually send us to the right by one unit, so we go up 4 and to the right 1. Now, a linear function has what we call a constant rate of change. I'll say it one more time, a constant rate of change. And what that is telling us is from one point to the next we go up 4 to the right 1, well then, the, from this point to the next, we'll go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right one again. And once we have three points, we can go ahead and graph this linear function, which is a straight line. Now, I want you to notice a couple things. If I were to ask you, how far to the left does this function go? Well, you would say, okay, it really never stops going to the left. And so when we talk about our domain, which is the set of all of our x values, since this thing is going eternally to the left, we say that it is going to negative infinity. And if I were to ask you how far is it going to the right, well, you would say, okay, well, you know what? It never really stops, so it's going to the right to positive infinity. Now, the range is essentially going to be the same thing. So when I look at the range, we're not asking about left to right. Now we're talking about the y values. And we would say, okay, well, this thing goes down forever and ever and ever and ever. And what is going down? Well, that's going to be from negative infinity to, and as it goes up forever and ever and ever, that would be going towards positive infinity. And so we'd say that the domain and range both go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, there's one final key feature that we want to look at. And that is, in fact, the x-intercept. So if the y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis, well, then the x-intercept would be where we cross the x-axis, which is right there. And this can be a little bit tricky. It's not always going to be just kind of a perfect number like our y-intercept. So what's our rule? Well, for the y-intercept, we always want to set... I'm sorry, for the x-intercept, we always want to set y equal to 0. So what does that look like? Well, our function is y equals 4x minus 2. I can write that as 0 equals 4x minus 2. And all we have to do from here is simply solve for x. 
We know that our first step is to add 2 to both sides. And now we get this 2 equals 4x. Let me rewrite that up here. 2 equals 4x. And how do you get rid of the 4? Well, we divide both sides by 4, and it turns out 2 divided by 4 reduces 2 1 half. And so we know that we have an x-intercept at 1 half, a y-intercept at negative 2, it has a slope of 4 over 1, and our domain and range are both from negative infinity to positive infinity. And that is essentially everything we could possibly talk about a linear function. Pause the video, finish writing down any notes that you need, and we'll move on to our second example. Alright, here we are in our second example, and it wants us to graph y equals 4 minus 3 over 2x. And you'll notice this probably looks a little bit different than our original example, but let's take a second and let's write down y equals mx plus b. Because anytime we're dealing with graphing a linear function, it's always helpful to write that down. Now notice a couple things. One, the m is always in front of the x. So when you look at 4 minus 3 over 2x, which one of those th two things has to be your slope? Is it going to be the 4 or the negative 3 over 2? Well, it's going to be the negative 3 over 2 because it's in front of the x. What about our y-intercept? Well, that's a constant. It's a number that does not have a variable, a letter. No, it doesn't have an x or a y or anything attached. It is simply 4. And so that's how we know that that's our y-intercept. Now, if you'll remember from our previous example, our y-intercept is always going to be our starting point. So if it's a positive 4, how do you think that, that would move us? Would it go up 4 or down 4 on the y-axis? Of course, this will go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can put our starting point. Now, our slope is actually a little bit more convenient when our slope is a fraction, like negative 3 over 2, because it's automatically telling us where to go. Also notice this negative, we have to choose to put it either with the top or the bottom number. And my personal preference is to just always put the negative with the top number, and that'll make your life incredibly simple. So we have negative 3 over 2. Well, remember that negative 3, I'll write our slope right here, negative 3 over 2, it's always delta y, the change in y, over delta x, the change in x, that negative 3 is saying, hey, our change in y is going to send us 1, 2, 3 units down. And since this 2 is positive, we can go 1, 2 units to the right. Now remember, we said that a linear function always has a constant rate of change. So from our first point to our second point, we went down 3 and to the right 2. Then from our second point to our third point, we will also go down 1, 2, 3. 3, and to the right, 2. And now that we have our three points, well, we can draw our linear function. Remember from our previous example, when talking about the domain, we're talking about all the values of x, and essentially we're saying, hey, how far to the left does this graph go? And this graph is essentially, you could draw this line to infinity. It is headed towards negative infinity, going to the left. All right, how far is this graph going to the right? Will it ever stop going to the right? And the answer is no. And so, of course, that's going towards positive infinity. Our range is going to be very similar. If you ask yourself, okay, the range is the set of all y values, and this line is going down forever and ever and ever and ever, well, how far down is it going? It's going down to negative infinity. And in the opposite direction, how high is it going? Well, it's going towards positive infinity. And so now we have our domain and our range are from negative infinity to positive infinity to both. And in fact, unless you're dealing with a piecewise function or you're putting some other sort of restrictions on it, linear functions will always have domains and ranges that go from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's a pretty good rule to remember. The last thing we want to talk about is going to be the x-intercept. Now remember, our x-intercept is in fact where y is set equal to 0. So we can go up into our original equation, 
instead of writing y equals, we can write 0 equals 4 minus 3 over 4 x. And from here, all we have to do is solve for x. Now the best thing you can always do is get rid of your constant first and ask yourself, how would you get rid of a positive 4? Well, minus 4, minus 4, and we have negative 4 equals negative 3 over 4 x. Oh, you know what? I made a little bit of a mistake here. That should be 3 over 2. That's okay. We'll change that to a 3 over 2 as well. And so this is something that a lot of you might not be familiar with, but how do you get rid of a fraction in front of an x? Should we divide by negative 3 over 2? And not quite. We actually want to multiply by its reciprocal, which means you take the fraction and you flip it. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative 2 over 3 times negative 2 over 3. And this becomes incredibly easy when you know your rules of fractions. I write negative 4 over 1, I write it as a fraction, and the rule for fractions is that you multiply the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom. So here, negative 2 times negative 4 would give us positive 8 over, and on the bottom times the bottom, 3 times 1 would give us 3. And so we say, hey, this also has an x-intercept at positive 8 thirds, which you can kind of see from our graph is somewhere in between 2 and 3. All right, I hope that these examples have helped you out, and I'll see you guys in our level 2 video.